Imagine, one day you wake up in the morning, have your breakfast, and about to leave for the office. When you go out suddenly you observed something fishy with the climate today. After few movements, you heard a very big blast. And you find that there is a series of volcanic blasts 50 miles away from you. Your surroundings are filled with smoke, dust, and even toxic gases, and you can see red burning lava coming out of the volcanic mountain. What will you do? Did you know there are more than 150 active volcanoes in the United States and its territories? You might feel better to learn that an active volcano is one that has erupted in the past 10,000 years. Nonetheless, millions of Americans live, work or vacation in places that could be affected by volcanic activity. On average, there are about 50 to 70 volcanoes that erupt every year. Some of them erupt multiple times, while others only have one eruption. The typical number of individual eruptions per year is more in the range of about 60 to 80. But how to escape from eruption? Well, you will be having many options. The first is to take out your car drive away from the mountain as fast as possible to a safe place. Driving in ashy conditions is very dangerous because of visibility issues. According to the USGS, even dry ash can make roads very slippery. When it gets wet, volcanic ash turns into a mud-like substance that can also be very tricky to drive on. If you have to drive, stay below 55 km per hour. In heavy ash conditions, don't follow other cars too closely and always use your headlights. The abrasive nature of ash is also something you should keep in mind with your wipers and windshield, which is also another reason why you shouldn't drive out in ash unless you're forced to. So if you are taking all these precautions you might not be able to drive that fast. An exceptional speed of 20 to 60 miles per hour, 32 to 97 kilometers per hour, was recorded following the collapse of a lava lake at Mount Miraganga, which would be less than the speed of your car, so this might not a better idea. The second option is to run away from the volcanic mountain. As humans can run at an average speed of 45 km per hour. Well, the bad news is scientists state that it's not a good idea to run when bushfires are creating smoky conditions. Even if it's hundreds of kilometers away, it's still not great for your health. We breathe deeper and faster when we run, so that means our lungs will absorb a higher level of smoke particles and other potentially harmful pollutants, compared to if we were doing less strenuous activities. If you can smell smoke in the air it's a signal that the air contains far too many pollutants to be healthy for you. Staying indoor with closed doors and windows. This idea is better than the first two, as long as the lava flow is not headed towards you. Wear long sleeved shirts and long pants. Use goggles to protect your eyes. If ash is continually falling, you may not be able to shelter indoors for more than a few hours, because the weight of the ash could collapse the roof of your building and block air intakes into the building. So what exactly you should do? There is no better time to stay cool other than when you are anticipating an event like a volcanic eruption. Staying cool will help you survive because you will be able to think rationally. Do not believe everything shared on social media, particularly those coming from an unreliable source. Conversely, avoid sharing unverified information which is potentially going to make the public panic, especially when you haven't read the information yourself. If you want to get updated, pay attention to the reliable media only, such as reputable newspapers online or offline, television, or radio. 
Always bring a pack of masks and sunglasses with you and wear them. Avoid low-lying places because lava flows and mud flows are more likely to pass here. Seat cover in case of ash falls and rock falls, and use masks to cover your nose and mouth, and to avoid breathing in the ashes. Stay in the evacuation center and wait for further instructions and do not leave until said so. Follow any evacuation orders issued by authorities and put your emergency plan into action. Local officials will give the most appropriate advice for your particular situation.